I gave you $2,000 to start your Amazon store, how would you spend it? Regardless of the dollar value here, it's a question that I commonly receive and probably the most important question that you need answered up front. Today, I'm gonna to share with you how I would take $2,000 and turn that into a successful Amazon product from A to Z. Let's get started. So the first thing that I would recommend doing with your $2,000, and it actually does not cost any money, is to educate yourself on what Amazon FBA is, what you're trying to accomplish, your business model, how the entire process actually works. Now it's critical that you start off by educating yourself because you're gonna make mistakes down the line and the more that you educate yourself up front before you spend any money into your Amazon business, you're going to avoid those mistakes later on. Now something that I didn't do when I first got started was actually perform product research. I was just selling products that I thought were going to sell rather than taking the time and seeing what the market actually needed and where the low competition actually existed in those Amazon categories. So there are two ways that I'd recommend educating yourself. Uh, first is through YouTube. You can simply type in Amazon FBA. There's a lot of great channels on here. Um, they're gonna educate you on the entire process, how to build a successful business. Of course, you can watch my channel, uh, but honestly, it does not matter to me as long as you're using these free resources. Uh, now, when selecting somebody to watch videos on, um, such as a YouTube channel, just make sure you find someone that is currently and actively selling on Amazon. Um, that way you can learn from their experience rather than just what they suggest and what they think is right. Now, a second way that you can educate yourself, and I've used this quite often, um, even though a lot of people don't tend to use this to its full capacity, is Amazon Seller University. Seller University is an Amazon-based um, educational system that is going to explain everything for the beginner Amazon seller. Everything such as how Amazon FBA works, the whole way to actually sell in your first product. It's great to understand what Seller Central is, um, which is your, your interface that you're going to be using, and just everything that you can imagine is on here. And best of all, it's free as long as you have an Amazon Seller account. All right, so that moves us on to number two, which is to actually create your seller account. Again, we're looking good so far. We have still have a budget of $0 spent uh, because this seller account is actually going to be free. Now it's only free if you sign up for the individual account. So there are two account types on Amazon, the individual account type and the professional account type. If you go to Amazon sign up page, you know, it's somewhat misleading because if you click sign up, you're gonna be paying $39 a month immediately as soon as you sign up and then any selling fees once you begin selling products. Now I recommend going to pricing and just select pricing. So you'll wanna scroll down to the middle of the page and you'll see that there's actually two account types. The individual account type is what I would recommend signing up as as a beginner because you're not paying $40 a month from the start. You're just gonna pay 99 cents every time you sell a unit. Now you are limited in uh, some things that you can do like advertising, but for setting up your account and becoming familiar with the interface, I think it's perfect to sign up this way. So again, go to the main page, click pricing, scroll down to the middle here, and click sign up for individual. Now that you have your account, it's time to actually start spending money and invest into our business. So we've educated ourselves, we've created our Amazon seller account, and now I would recommend actually educating yourself and finding a tool that will allow you to perform product research. What I mean by product research is using softwares like Jungle Scout, Helium 10, or anything very similar to those that will allow you to take a look at the backend data on Amazon and determine what areas on Amazon are buyers interested in based off the trends, based off of average units sold and search history, um, and what areas also provide low competition. Now, the reason why you want to perform product research is to avoid any mistakes when it comes to investing into a product and there's just thousands and thousands of sellers already on Amazon selling a similar product. This has happened to me in the past, but once I started performing my product research and finding areas on Amazon where there aren't a whole lot of sellers and there's actually a good bit of demand, I became much more successful. Now you may have the question, what actually determines a good product uh, when I'm performing my product research? Now I can get into hours and hours of how I analyze products, but to put it simply, there's a couple key indicators that will ultimately allow you to be successful and find that niche that you're looking for. Now the first thing before I even look at anything in this top row, this is Jungle Scout, is I always analyze the historical two year and or the one year uh, search volume trend. What I'm looking for for a long term product that I plan to sell for years to come is a product that has been trending up in search volume, aka demand, 
for the previous two years. As you can see down here, the iced coffee glasses niche has been trending up since uh, summer of 2020, and it's slowly increasing. Now, you, this is a great indicator that, hey, there's increasing demand over time, and it's gonna allow me to enter that niche and to continue riding that demand for years and years to come. Some other things that I pay particular attention to, the average monthly unit sold for this product is over 2,000. I want this number to be above 1,000, meaning the average listing is selling over 1,000 units per month. Some other basic things that I look for when uh, using Jungle Scout's Opportunity Finder um, is that competition is low or very low, greater than a seven out of 10 niche score, and seasonality is very low or low. Another way to determine seasonality is to ask yourself the question, you know, does it relate to a season or a holiday? If the answer is yes, you're not gonna be able to sell that long-term successfully. And then a final way of determining that, if you get on the search volume and you see spikes in demand consistently over two years during certain periods of time, for example, let's say in the spring you saw spikes and the next spring you saw another spike in demand, that means it's probably seasonal and it's not going to be a good long-term product. Now I'll leave it up to you on which software to actually go ahead and use. I do personally recommend Jungle Scout. I've just found the data to be much more reliable compared to Helium 10 and other softwares. Um, and if you want to get a discount, you can go ahead and use the link in the description. That way you can get 25% off. Um, and I'd recommend going ahead with a three month plan or the one month plan. Okay, so we'll come back here. We've spent $149 of our 2000 up to this point. We're looking good. And we just have a couple more steps before we really get into the nitty gritty details. Next, it's time to start thinking about branding your products. It's very important to brand your products. That way you can establish brand loyalty. And if you look at any long-term seller on Amazon, they've all branded their products. The first thing that you want to do is to hire someone to create a branded professional logo for you. Or if you have the skills to actually do this yourself, please, by all means, go ahead and do that. You wanna make sure that your brand relates to the products that you begin selling. Uh, for this scenario that we just took a look at, let's go ahead with the iced coffee glasses. And I would encourage you to actually think about what is my brand going to mean to customers and how it actually relates to my product. Just important questions to ask yourself. Now, if you're not tech savvy or you know, you're not looking to actually do this yourself, you can go on Fiverr. You know, this is not someone I recommend going with or I, I do recommend going with, it's just someone I found quickly on Fiverr. And you can get a quick logo by providing them some requirements and some description of what you're looking to do for only $45. So it's relatively inexpensive to go ahead and do this. Okay, now at this point, we have our brand, we have our branded logo. It's time to actually trademark that brand. Now, I know what you're thinking. You hear the word trademark or patent. You're gonna be very nervous and be like, no, I'm just a beginner. This is way too much. I'm in over my head. Now, bear with me because it's actually extremely easy to obtain a trademark, especially compared to a patent. What I recommend doing at this point is to um, use one of my videos I provide. I think this is a, a great full tutorial from the whole way to the start, the whole way to the end of the application. But this is gonna show you how to actually, you know, create your logo, create your trademark, and to go through the United States um, trademark process and to file your application. The reason why we want to do this is to allow us to, one, use our brand name on our product on Amazon, and two, it's going to unlock enhanced or A-plus content, which is really going to allow you to set your listing apart from other professional sellers. Now it costs $250 to file a trademark and it takes roughly eight months to get that approved. For Amazon brand registry though, all you need is your serial number in order to actually become approved for brand registry. You'll receive that serial number as soon as you file for your trademark application so that you don't have to wait eight months to actually begin using that brand name. Okay, so let's move on to the fun part which is actually manufacturing our products after we speak to a supplier and we begin to negotiate with them. Now I would budget about $750 here. Uh, this is almost half of our total budget, but this is really you know, the bread and butter of what we're trying to accomplish. We're trying to bring a product to life and to solve a problem for a customer and to eventually sell that. So this is really the fun part and my most enjoyable part whenever I'm starting a new product. Now it doesn't matter if your supplier is locally based in your town or your city, um, or if they're actually overseas, a lot of these principles will still apply. For this example here, let's just go ahead with the iced coffee glasses that we found when we were performing the product research earlier on. And I'm just gonna take you through a few things and um, you know, a few metrics that I take a look at before I go ahead and I select a supplier. Now this supplier here, you can quickly see in the bottom right-hand corner of Alibaba that they're verified. They should have this blue badge here. 
If a supplier is verified on Alibaba, that means there's been a third party inspection to just understand their quality metrics, uh, their processes, and overall just the, you know, the quality of that supplier. It's very important that they're verified versus a gold seller or a no badge seller. Now, the next thing I take a look at, obviously, is the unit rate. I want to make sure that's within my budget and it will allow me to profit at least a 35% profit margin. What a 35% profit margin means is that I keep $3.50 in profit for every $10 that I make. So you want to make sure that you at least incorporate all that. Um, with that being said, make sure you understand the Amazon cost, the Amazon referral fees and the FBA fees. That's very important to factor that into this. Now for me, let's say you know $1.25 is perfect. Uh, that means I can order $750 divided by $1.25. means I can order 600 units, right? That is incorrect because you have to think about shipping from China or wherever your supplier is to Amazon or to you know, your location. So I usually, for a product like this, I would average about a dollar in shipping currently in 2022. Uh, that way, you, know, you can really just factor that into it and be conservative with that estimate. So if we factor into a dollar, our new cost of goods sold becomes 225. So if we take $750, which is our budget, and divide that by 225, we'll get about 333 units. Now, last thing you want to pay particular attention to, uh, which you know this was an, a great choice for this example, but if you're looking to customize your product with your branded logo, you need to take a look at the supplier's minimum order quantity or their MOQ. The MOQ is how many pieces or units that you have to order for them to actually begin to customize that product with your logo or a design change or you know a different color. For this example, it was 3,000 units, so I'd have to order 3,000 units in order to actually put my logo on that. Okay, and moving on to step number seven, this is actually creating our Amazon listing. This is taking product images, this is creating the bullet points, um, and doing all that fun stuff just to really market your product correctly. I cannot stress this enough. Do not skip this step or you know, use the supplier stock photos and just copy paste some information because you know one, that's copyright, and two, you're gonna just blend in with the rest of the Amazon listings. You're not gonna differentiate yourself. Now, you're competing against other national sellers in your country's marketplace, so you need to find a clever way of differentiating your listing and your product from everyone else because that's gonna give you a competitive edge. What I recommend doing if you're, again, not tech savvy is I recommend hiring someone to actually do this for you. I budgeted $445 just because that's actually a service that I provide here. So I'll actually go ahead, I'll create your listing and I'll complete everything to really optimize your listing as best as it can be. Now you can do this by yourself. I've self-educated myself on how to do everything. I have tutorials on how to take product photos with you know just your smartphone and you can give yourself that clear white background. Um, you can do this by yourself, but if you're looking to accelerate the process, there are services out there to do that for you. All right, and the last thing that I would spend my money on is a way of marketing or advertising your product. Um, I would spend the remaining budget, so we have about $361 to put us at that $2,000 investment level. And I'd put all that money into advertising using Amazon pay-per-click advertising, which is integrated into Amazon, where I would go ahead and use Google AdWords to place my product listing when someone actually searches on Google. A strategy that I've always loved, and there's a video in the cards right now, you can check out how to do that step-by-step, step, is to actually place your Amazon listing onto other competitor listings and your price here is about 10 to 15% or more below their sales price. Now, the reason why I love this strategy is because whenever you first get started, you're gonna have zero or a limited number of reviews for your Amazon listing. In other words, if I was a consumer or customer purchasing your product on your listing, I'm taking a lot of risk because there's no feedback telling me from customers if it's a good product, if the quality is good, if the shipping was quick, you know, so be it. So by using the strategy, you're able to place your listing onto an existing competitor listing who might have, you know, 80,000 reviews. And as long as your price is 10% or more below their sales price, it incentivizes customers to actually click your listing and to at least consider it. And at that point, once you've drawn them into your listing, assuming that you have great pictures and an optimized listing that really explains your product well, you're going to be able to convert those sales and it will ultimately lead to more reviews. So thank you for watching. That is how I would spend $2,000 in today's environment to actually successfully launch a product. I know that you can do this too. Just make sure you self-educate yourself first, spend wisely, understand your cost, and make sure to avoid costly mistakes.